Okay, so we are talking about JPEG files and one of the often stated facts about JPEGs is that they give you less room for post-processing. There's less latitude in our highlights, our shadows, our white balance, all of those things that help us to create the image that we envision in our heads is not as adjustable with a JPEG file. So I wanted to show you kind of what that looked like. Um, and we're also going to, in another video on the other end of it, we're gonna look at what it looks like to adjust a raw file. So I chose this, this is a JPEG. Um, it was shot, this is straight out of camera JPEG, but it was shot on a Fuji with, I believe the classic Chrome film simulation not positive. So if somebody out there is like, actually, I can tell from this that it's blah, blah, blah. Cool. Let me know. I believe it's classic Chrome, but I'm not positive. That's all. So I chose this image because of the disparity, the, ch the difference between the shadows and the highlights. So you see, we have these three strong silhouetted figures in the foreground, and then we have the bright white of the Taj Mahal and the background. So let's look at first what it looks like if we try to adjust our white balance. Um, it's pretty white balanced as it is. I set it to auto on my camera, did a pretty good job. But let's say it weren't, if I adjust it, there we go, that was pretty subtle, not so bad. Um, if it were way off and I tried to do an adjustment, it might go one extreme to the other. We're lucky with this one, wet, whereas it's not so bad. I like it a little warmer, okay. Now here's the big one. I have these silhouetted figures. Let's say that I wanted to recover some of the detail in these shadows. So I have this man here in the front and he does have a little bit of detail in the front of his face and his head where the light was hitting him more so than the back here. So let's say I wanted to recover some of those shadows. Again, this is a JPEG file. So let's see what happens when I try to bring the shadows up. Now, just a side note, this is Lightroom Classic that I'm working in, but this is a really basic function that is going to be in every editing system that you are using. Um, I'm just going to look at the shadows slider, and we're gonna get into more about post-processing later, so don't stress too much if this doesn't really mean anything and you're not sure what exactly I'm doing. I just want you to be looking at the black spaces here, okay? So I'm gonna start pulling it to the right, which is going, trying to recover those shadows, trying to fill them in with some detail. But the JPEG doesn't know what that detail is. It has no idea. It just knows that there's shadow there. So you notice that it just got kind of gray and kind of faded. Now, you might think it looks good. <laughs> that was a very trendy look for a hot second, like six years ago. Um, but if I were trying to get more detail in the shadow, that is completely unsuccessful at that. Kind of the same goes for our highlights here. If you've seen the Taj Mahal in person, you know that there is actually quite a bit of texture on it. These are individual bricks that you can see clearly with your own eyes and you can see the texture. But here it's so bright, the sun was hitting, you know, from this direction, from the, the right side of the frame. So the right side of the dome here has like zero texture. If I wanted to try to bring some of those highlights back and gain some texture on it, I can try and watch what happens. So we kind of are seeing a little bit more, but we're getting a lot of artifacts. Um, you see this dark line? That was there already, but it gets much more prominent. We're also seeing quite a bit, and it's on all the edges those artifacts there. We're also seeing a halo effect around our dark frames. You see this kind of glow? It becomes more prominent the more the highlights get pulled in. Okay, so this is just another example of something that we don't have a lot of latitude on. I can't really adjust that too much. Now, there is more. We could play around with our colors and everything here, and you're gonna see that the big thing here in like 
the simplest terms and the, the real life example here is that when you do these adjustments in JPEGs, you can't make big adjustments. Everything is going to be really intense. So for instance, if I wanted to shift my sky color slightly, even the smallest movements are very, very, very dramatic. And it's kind of casting in a specific way. There's, there's, it's very difficult to make minor micro adjustments when working on a JPEG. You have some room for it, you can do it a little bit, but the moment you try to do something altering, um, you're gonna start to see some artifacts or some giant shifts that you're trying to not make, okay? Now, the reality of this is that I'm quite happy with how the picture came out straight out of camera. My intention was to have those to be silhouetted. This is basically exactly how I wanted it to look. Maybe it needs to be leveled a little bit, um, but that's really it. I mean, I'm, I'm quite happy, like I said, with how it came out straight out of camera. And you're gonna find that to be the case sometimes. You're, you maybe aren't happy to sit in front of a computer and edit uh, and post-process for however long it takes you. So maybe you're happy with how the, the photos come out. In the case of this, I was traveling for a bit and I didn't bring my computer with me. I was just storing these things on an iPad, but I wanted to share as I went. So it was much easier for me to shoot in RAW plus JPEG and then have those JPEGs ready to go the day of without any post-processing from my end. And that's often going to be the case for some people is that you prefer not to have to do some post-processing and JPEGs are great for that. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next one where we're gonna look at a couple raw files and see how much data is actually stored in a raw file and how much is actually recoverable in comparison to this one. See you in a moment.